Yeah, um, I was I was introduced to BookClick um, through um, a colleague of mine at a former company. So I worked at this uh, large information aggregator uh, and technology company called EBSCO Information Services um, for about three years. About two years ago, um, our, head, our head of uh, Latin America said, you've got to see this business, you've got to meet uh, Daniel. Um, they're doing amazing things in Latin America. Um, and uh, I met Daniel uh, at the Frankfurt Book Fair. So gosh, in 2019, so quite a long time ago, it feels like because of COVID. Yeah. And um, Daniel just was this amazingly visionary, uh, articulate, high energy entrepreneur and just that, that alone i was really really interested to learn more and um so yeah so i mean the idea is what book is trying to do trying to connect minds improve learning outcomes um for everybody it's such an important and powerful idea that um yeah the relationship just grew and grew from there and then a few uh, last year daniel asked if i could come onto his advisory board and help him from there and i've been working with him ever since I think, I think one of the biggest challenges is, is around uh, impact and cost. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of people working in higher education will think that they're their peak, the best they've ever been. But if you look at the high level statistics, uh, we have the highest rates of youth unemployment uh, ever. Um, you know, and it's almost as if, if you go to university, you'll have less chance of getting a job. And I'm not saying that's the case. But you also put that against the cost and the, the, ex, the really expensive cost of, of going to college and taking on huge amounts of debt, particularly here in the US. Um, I think, I think uh, student loans uh, outstrips credit card debt three to one now. It's, it's just an incredible amount of debt that people are taking on to get educated and they're not getting good jobs. And those jobs that they're being prepared for aren't, aren't there in the economy. So there's a real mismatch. There's a real um, uh, value uh, problem there as well. Um, so I think I think the whole economics and, and, and value of higher education is is particularly challenging. Um, that's kind of the big macro picture. Um, going a bit deeper into that, I think um, there's also huge amounts of divide. Um, so education is meant to be a great leveler in society, helps people go through the different economic classes uh, as well. Um, but I think COVID is is is, is really increase the amount of digital divide so people who have access and can access and can do stuff online and people that just don't um, and that's a real problem um, and so there is there are really powerful movements now towards um, moving to outcomes so people are measuring what outcomes are so what are pass rates what are um, what are uh, grades what are completion rates what are satisfaction levels for both students and teachers those things have been measured more and more and more now, which is fantastic. Um, and technology is lining up to be, technology is lining up to deliver those experiences that can hit those outcomes. Um, so I think in that sense, education is becoming a lot, is coming under the microscope a lot more from, from uh, funders and also from buyers, either students or parents um, that, put, that, put, that put themselves through that. And I think I think now it's, it's less about just getting access to something digitally, it's about what you actually do with it. Uh, and does it drive an outcome? And again, going back to BookClick, BookClick's job is not to sell more um, books. BookClick's job, it can obviously help uh, libraries work out what's more valuable and what's more useful, um, and they can get a better return. But BookClick's job is to connect minds to drive better learning outcomes. And that's, you know, being more inclusive, being more connected and, and, and better, better outcomes for students and universities. So I, I think a couple of things. So, so firstly, um, from a from a cost perspective, um, things have to become more accessible. And so, whether that's depending less on big fixed costs of expensive library, faculty building, faculty sets, and actually scaling through platforms like BookClick and others um, as a way to distribute ideas and knowledge more efficiently, is going to become really more important. Um, I think I talked about this earlier: measuring outcomes that matter. Um, and really 
embracing that scientific process of experimentation and testing and improving, you know, not counting clicks, which happens in so much of the education and edtech industry today, count outcomes, measure outcomes, set standards, does this tool actually drive an outcome or not? Um, I, think, I think too much of education, whether it be content, whether it be prestige of a university is based on reputation and that reputation isn't measured. And in the macro metrics that you're seeing, they're not really looking really good at all. So I think um, embracing measurement, embracing experimentation and really going to improve outcomes. People should walk into uh, this industry thinking, how can I improve learning outcomes? And, and, and raise education standards, whatever market or segment or slice I'm serving. Um, I think I think what we're also going to start to see um, uh, is a shift from what I call um, this is why I'm backing and getting involved with BookClick. Um, we're going to see a shift from traditional supply industries to more um, demand side industries. And what I mean by that is if you think about the traditional publishing or content model, you actually go and make something and that the power is all in about the authors and this product that you can ship into the market um, and you control through paywalls and distribution and all this kind of stuff. I think ultimately, if you look at other industries, it's going to shift from not who owns the hotel, but who owns the booking list, the people who are looking for things and matching demand and supply. Um, so these platform businesses, you know, whether they be Airbnb or, or um, Uber or what have you. And I think these sort of supply, sorry, demand driven um, platforms or, or market making platforms are going to become more and more important because markets will always trade to the most efficient point. Uh, whereas pipelines, they want to maximize the value of what they're making. So um, kind of different uh, incentives um, um, and we've seen some of the damage that um, other type, other players in the industry have, have done uh, to research or learning from that sort of pipeline mindset. Um, I think also, um, so moving from supply to demand driven, I think the final thing that, it, that I'm, I'm, I'm actually part of and experimenting myself with is, is um, it's, it's no longer going to be one size fits all. Um, and what I mean by that, traditionally, you just go to one university, you, you do it for your three or four years, uh, you get the, your degree, you do your courses, all your materials. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more um, stacking of credentials uh, and of courses and ways you're going to learn. So, um, you know, right now I'm doing a I'm doing a course on Wharton in Wharton and fintech. Um, it's it's for a certain for six weeks. It's intensive. I'm forming a group with a hundred other people around the world who are interested in disruption in fintech, and then we'll disperse and. I'll have that credit to put towards something. And again, I don't necessarily need to have another master's degree, um, but it's my learning opportunity. One thing where I saw this really happening is in my last company, we had a summer internship program and we ran it over two years. So it was a two, it was a two year time difference. And, and we got, I don't know, about a hundred applications each year, maybe a bit more in the second year. And in the first year we were looking to all the CVs and maybe one or two people mentioned credits or courses they got at another university online through some sort of hybrid model. Um, the following year, there was a significant increase. It was, it was, and it was not just, it was not just um, one or two courses. It, you know, people were really stacking up other opportunities uh, at other universities. So I think you're going to see people shopping around more uh, for what they want to study and where they want to study. Uh, it's no longer about getting a degree from one place. And more and more employers are going to recognise that. Um, and I think the the market will become a lot more fluid and fungible. Um, so you can you can match your skills, you can get your skills that will, will, will hit demand or your interest anyway. And so there'll be a much better matching of demand and supply um, through, through the um, breaking up of, of, of whole degrees and whole big unit investment pieces, such as coughing up for four years of college. Um, I think I think BookClick is, is is bringing several things, and it's differentiated for for a couple of reasons. So, firstly, um, BookClick is a is a is a very user focused company. So, a lot of the current vendors that I used to work with or, or, or interacted with when I was a student, um, the focus is very much on the library and the librarian. And 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 Daniel, and as you know, uh, and the team at BookClick, they grew up used to consuming. Um, music through Spotify or videos through Netflix and 
and communicating asynchron asynchronously through Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and you know all of these different things and and they they they, they felt that there, there just wasn't that really good quality user experience out there for the student to connect with each other to connect with faculty. So I think I think from a user experience point, um, it is it is completely user led and it's founded by by users. So that that's the first one. Um, I think the second thing that's really powerful um, is that they've stumbled on a really important idea in learning. Um, a lot of traditional learning is what I call the search view print model. So you look for something, you view it, you print or do something with it. Um, if you look at how people learn today and people how communicate today, it's very much a team sport or networking sport. Um, and, and what BookClick does is it's stumbled upon, well, not stumbled upon, it's, it's, it's pulled out the need for people to connect to others to learn and to find out things. So the smartest people, one of my biggest learnings in the last year working with BookClick and others is not to try to solve every single problem yourself, but you need to go and find someone and form teams and work with other people. And so um, being able to, to learn in a team with others, whether they're strangers, whether they're friends, whether they're classmates, whether they're faculty, is a really, really powerful tool that just simply doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, and I think finally, um, because, it's, because it's content agnostic, it doesn't depend on any specific publisher, it's completely focused on um, the student and it's, and it's focused on um, the experience of that student learning. Um, it, it can be a real big meta platform. And you've seen this in the growth, Daniel, you know, the company has seen this in the growth. It's just grown really, really quickly. Everybody loves it. Everybody uses it. Um, and uh, it can sit across all learning platforms. So it's a really powerful meta organizer that can connect minds across, not just different systems, different publishers, different content, different workflows, um, but also different universities and different groups of people. And I think the power of connection um, is, the more people that you can connect to or can connect into it, the more powerful it can become. Passion and fun is really important. Um, so ultimately, whatever you do, if you can find out what makes you really happy and whether that's a place type of people you're around or the type of job that you're doing, um, you know, having fun and really loving what you do. I mean, that will carry you through the bad times as well as the good times. And I think connected to that sort of sense of fun and love um, is that purpose. You know, am I, am I really doing something that's going to matter? Uh, whether that's the planet, your family, your kids, an animal, your country, is it something that really matters beyond you? Um, and, and that, that I think, ultimately purpose will, will, will guide you. And it's very easy in a career to think about the next promotion, think about the bit of money, think about, um, I don't know, a lot of selfish, personal or fearful things. But if you can keep going back to your purpose and your identity, um, then you're going to have a great event. You're going to learn and hopefully have a lot of fun.